Hello. The Necolite Orchestra, the musical collective, had the idea of doing a marathon. The Necolite project is really interesting because there are so many musicians on stage, up to 13. So the goal was to recreate the musicians' stage positions to give a sense of depth of field, which is really difficult to do on a stereo system as we can't get the sensation of distance from the source, though there are some ways that all the sound engineers will know. I wanted to work in immersive, but we could go one better and use WFS. I had no idea that it would be possible. For me, it was almost utopian. So we still had to define the number of sound sources that were going to enable us to do real WFS. As those who are interested in this technology will know, you need a certain number of speakers in order to create a credible experience. So we tried using seven sources. Perhaps more would have been better, but nevertheless, it worked. I was confident from the offset. I even went out and bought the speakers in the week as I wanted to reproduce the experience and prepare the way ahead. Regarding the sound system, I used caras in seven clusters of four attached to a bridge in front of the stage, as well as kivas in seven stacks of two stacked on the stage. The kiva stacks, of course, were on the same axes as the cara clusters. For the mics and consoles, I used two Rio 3224Ds, a patch with 60 ins and a CL5. The appeal of the CL5, of course, being the Dante network, which allows us to interface the SPAT revolution on the MacBook Pro with a virtual Dante sound card. Using the direct outs, I sent nearly all the sources to the SPAT revolution, excluding the more complex instruments that require several mics, such as the piano, the harp, or even the strings, on which I always have a DPA and a pickup. So the SPAT revolution was receiving 50 audio channels, with SPAT's WFS audio engine itself generating seven more that were attributed to each of the Cara clusters or Kiva stacks. The audio paths of the Dante and the Spat Revolution pass through the Rio and hit the LA racks in AES. The appeal of the Spat Revolution is to recreate a dimension. It's capable of generating a space, and in particular, the reverb linked to that space. This is something we can't do in a traditional concert with more standard tools. The concept is compatible with several audio interfaces. It works with Mac's core audio engine, so we can plug that into whatever we like, be it Dante, DigiGrid, or whatever. So, we can install a small setup with ease. In about an hour, we can do what we want. I'm not suggesting that we can easily exhaust all of its possibilities, because obviously there are many, many parameters. But still, after one hour, we can create a setup that works. I have to say, I couldn't believe it. Straight away, the sensation is incredible, because we can make the sound sources all but disappear. Obviously, we're used to hearing the sound coming from the speakers, which is still the case, of course. This isn't magic. However, the speakers themselves disappear behind the sound field, that famous synthesized sound field. It's no longer the console doing the mixing or the summation, it's the SPAT. And the SPAT doesn't just do left-right summation, the SPAT does a virtual summation in a virtual space. Perhaps it's that that gives so much naturalness to the sources. That's the goal, in fact, to ensure that people are moved by the artist's emotions, and above all, to ensure that instead of having 15 or 20 percent of the audience in the center with good seats, you know what it's like. Here, I was walking about earlier, and I'm almost tempted to say that we have 100 percent. Perhaps I'm exaggerating a little to say that 100 percent of the audience zone is good, but I really have the impression that we're able to respect the image that we want to portray, no matter where we are, both in terms of depth and breadth. And that's really incredible, because I don't know of anything else that would be capable of doing that on such a large audience zone. So after all these hours of work, what I felt in the Flux studios, or at home even, I also felt here, better even, inevitably. We don't have the same sound system. It's just incredible. I think that we go beyond that which we can do with stereo or other known systems. We go way beyond. It's going to be tough to go back.
Well, 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 look at that. I think we are live. Well, anyway, I see myself in the astronaut, in the spationaut, actually. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today, Wednesday the 30th, uh, to an exciting webinar that I've been wanting to do for the longest time. Thank you for joining wherever you are. Here I am, live from Montreal, streaming this webinar today on our series. Uh, you know, that we've been uh, doing since the, the release of SPAT Revolution 22.2. Streaming live from Montreal, as I was saying. Hello to California. Guys in California waking up. We may have people actually in Asia that are joining us. Thank you for staying that late. And obviously, to finish, we're not going to forget our friends in Europe, Central Europe. Well, all the way west and east, wherever you are. So thank you for joining. Uh, exciting time today, as I was saying. And uh, yeah, let's uh, start. Uh, let's start with this. Uh, you know, today uh, the conversation is going to be, you know, I believe exciting anyway. Talking about the integration of QLab, this powerful show control and spat revolution. For the one that don't know me, my name is Hugo Larin with the Flux Immersive team. Y saludos para los uh, los latinos y también y bonjour para nuestros amigos franceses que son con nosotros. I would try to make it a bit international, but the session today will be in English. Um, we can take questions uh, in French. Our moderators are online. I'm assuming Arsène, our social media master, is online. Will be watching the stream as we go uh, today. And beyond that is most probably Nicola from our application support team. Gail, our lead developer, founder, uh, you know, that most probably is, is around. And other members of the team, Vincent in support. Anyway, the Flux Immersive team is around to moderate the conversation if you have questions as I go through this presentation. So, um, yeah. Exactly. So today, QLab, crafting shows with QLab. We won't be spending too much time in SPAT Revolution and all the possibility. Just that would require a session. We'll be focusing on the integration of both tools. Well, I think that we can actually get started if everyone is ready. Let's not wait a single moment. Okay, let's actually get going. So let's talk about this integration, you know, the audio integration part. I mean, it kind of starts there, right? So we've got two softwares, two applications, and we'll be talking about integrating those two from an audio perspective and from a control perspective. And we'll be putting some focus on a single machine setup, single computer. And why is that? Well, yes, maybe if you're crafting a show, you will end up with dedicated playback computers and rendering computer and environment. But as you are pre producing, creating, crafting the show, chances are that you're on the single computer, and that's what we're going to be focusing on today a bit. So what we've got going here, some of you are most probably familiar with QLab. You know, QLab has up to 64 Q output, and we're going to be taking those audio Q output as source objects into SPAT, object for the object-based mixing environment that we're talking about here. And we're going to be able to do this with something that's called the SPAT Send plugin. Some of you may be familiar with SPAT Send in the digital audio workstation domain. We use it for automation and for audio routing. But thanks to this feature called Local Audio Pat on a single computer, Computer, we can actually bond the two applications together. There's other ways to do it. Of course, people that are in the Mac OS environment know about these bridge audio solutions that exist, being you know the black hole solution, I mean, and there's a long list of solutions in Mac OS. But here we've got the plugin to ease the old integration. We're actually going to be looking at that from the audio perspective. Then obviously for a larger deployment, you know, uh, we'll be talking about using the core audio of the system. Uh, to route AQLab output being an AES67, AVB, Dante. I'm using AVB here. I'm going to be routing the, down to the console later on. So as you are, you know, building a larger system, a deployment of playbacks and renderer, maybe main and backup, we're obviously going to be using audio over IP solutions or MADI, multi-channel audio solutions that exist, right? Um, there's two SPAT revolution to support this. Important to note, we've got the essential version. I'm going to be working in essential today, up to 32Q output. That's the limitation of SPAT essential, but that's obviously a lot of audio objects, mono stereo objects from the Q outputs of QLab. And we can actually jump and go to the ultimate version. I'll, co I'll come back on the, those limitations a bit later on, just so you understand right now, you know, 32Q output with essential up to 64Q output with ultimate. Now that's not a limitation of ultimate, 
Well, that's obviously QLab with the 64Q outputs, okay? Moving on, moving on now to the control aspect, because you know we've talked about the integration on the audio side, let's talk about the control aspect. No secrets, we are using OSC. The majority of immersive audio, you know, spatial audio uh, systems out there are using OSC, open sound control. So we're gonna be using those network crews, creating network crews and sending OSC messages to SPAT. And those can be different things. They can be single messages, and a single message is just basically, you know, telling an object, do something, you know, change a parameter, a specific one. Now, we use interpolation time options in SPAT, so you can actually add this as an argument. We'll look at it um, as a option to actually do a smooth movement instead of just a, you know, direct move without any interpolation or crossfade time, if you want to call it this way. Um, other options in this control integration will be to use what we call the fade message. So that is a QLab feature. We'll look at it quite rapidly, actually, when we dive in in a few seconds. So those fade messages are basically, instead of using interpolation, you're going to be using the ramp, an actual ramp uh, in one D. So basically going from one vowel to the other on a certain time. And thanks to QLab for this. And last but not least, it's what we call the 2D fade, the XY coordinate map, right? The X and the Y of a source in space, the position, uh, which is a part of QLab as well. So those are kind of our three ways to be in integrating, uh, to be integrating uh, our solution. Now, the grammar, because yes, that is a reality out there. Every single piece of spatial audio engines, you know, or a lot of, you know, pr products using OSC for that matter of fact, use their own grammar. And like everyone, we have our SPAT grammar. It is an extensive, an extensive grammar. Sorry, I've got a call coming in. Let me just make sure he's muted. That is my friend Arsène that's joining back in the green room so he can speak to me. Um, yeah, sorry. So SPAT has an extensive, an extensive list of properties for sources, for rooms, for master, pretty much anything. Even some setups are possible with OSC and SPAT. But there is another grammar that I want to kind of bring into the conversation, and that is the ADM OSC. I'll cover this in two seconds. So both grammars are possible, and you'll understand the advantages of maybe using the ADM OSC grammar um, as um, you know as time evolves. So. We are providing template. That is an important part of the conversation. Granted, you can download our long list of OSC messages and make your own, but we have these templates that are available. I actually think we're updating some today as well. So some of those example files basically are there where you can copy the message, you know, massage it to whatever you need, but that simplifies the whole exercise. Okay, and well, Am I supposed to talk about this? Well, QLab 5 is around the corner. So I was just going to say, watch this space. QLab 5 is coming. Don't have a date for it. But there's some interesting things that will, again, ease that integration, simplify it. Although, or, you know, it's actually going quite well, the, these examples. There's some very interesting things coming from the figure 53 uh, camp. Um, voila. Now, I briefly talked about, you know, what we've you know, refer as ADM OSC, and I want to do a quick parenthesis on this. And this is an industry initiative in live production, a use case that would, that started with Radio France and uh, our friends from L Acoustics and Flux, where we, and we have been leading literally with these these groups, and then a larger group actually joined the. Uh, but the early initiative started with those three uh, uh, entities here. And the idea was actually to come up with an open source industry for standardization. Okay. Um, that is a challenge. You're starting to integrate, um, you know, different controllers, different show controls, different spatial engines, for that matter of fact. The fact that you have to deal with different grammar and messages and one and the other and converting and patching is often challenging. So really that initiative is to simplify this, a simple message that everyone understands. And we're getting a group around the table for this. And this is for the object-based audio ecosystems, the workflow of remote controllers, rendering engine, digital audio workstation. You'll actually see as I continue some of the members that have joined that group already. And the goal here is just to define a standard for the position, positioning information, the data. Let's call it simple X, Y, Z, or azimuth elevation distance is actually part of that as well. But it's to define the standard and normalize mechanism that everyone understands. Really simplifies the integration. So um, that was kind of a quick one. I mean, Flux has been involved in helping that group to actually get some stress tests, some modules, and the 
you know, the, 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 the group of manufacturers is growing. This ADM OSC is now possible in SPAT Revolution and ELISA controller. Ovation, our friends from Merging Technology, which have a playout system, show control systems, are using that integration. Nundo, Steinberg. And interestingly, in Ovation and Nundo, we're literally talking about the 3D panner, the panner in that show controller or in Nundo that speaks ADM OSC to SPAT Revolution. There's some sessions coming on on that later on. Uh, but yeah, going on, continuing Space Map Go from Meyer Sound has recently added it on the input side of their system. And lately as well, our friend from Sound Particles with OSC Space Controller. I wish I actually uh, had set it up, but it's actually right there. Uh, where is that space controller? Yeah, space controller right there. Quite an interesting tool, you know, where you use your phone to direct the sound and you can use distance. Oh, let me just do it. Using this to actually use it, use, uh, to move the distance of the object into space. Again, using ADM OSC, so sound particle, open space control. Um, no time to actually show this today, but very interesting tool. And last but not least, well, I do mention QLab with upcoming version 5. The rumor is, let's call it a rumor, that ADM OSC you know, could be part of some future releases. Um, Anyway, the grammar is public, the information is public. Someone could build a QLab template with using that uh, ADM OSC grammar if you wanted to. Okay, moving on. So let's actually look at some little you know, diagrams here to understand what's going on. So let's first focus on that standalone creation workstation, my laptop, my computer, you know, that I want to be integrating QLab application and SPAT revolution. And what we've got going here is the network queues that you're familiar in QLab are basically, you know, being, you know, uh, sent to a network patch. And when we are on a single computer, we are using what we call local OS. We're going to be configuring this together in two seconds. And local OS 127001 for the ones that... Um, that you know want the uh, the specific information, but we'll look at it. And that's the ability to send the network messages on the same computer to both application. And SPAT will be receiving this as OSC inputs, um, you know, as a local host input, and that will allow for the control portion. Next, but not least, obviously, the audio portion on a single computer. What I'm showing today is the use of SPAT send on our Q outputs, up to 64 Q outputs, SPAT send plugin and the local audio pad feature that allows us to send mono or stereo objects. So Q outputs are becoming mono or stereo objects into SPAT. Now, why 64? That is the limitation of QLab, as I was saying, and why mono or stereo? That is, again, the limitation of, uh, of, of QLab. Now, you could have a 7.1 track that you're playing and sending them as multiple you know, multiple monos or monos and stereo combination, for that matter of fact. But that is a limitation of the Q outputs and the plugin that we can put on those Q outputs. Coming as source in SPAT, as software audio. So on the SPAT revolution side, software inputs, and if you look at the right side, hardware output. And that is new from 22.2. We support incoming from software and outputting to hardware. And that would mean outputting to what? Outputting to a pair of headphones, could be, for that matter of fact, my little audio interface that I travel with, or for that matter of fact, the local output on the computer, and, and be able to listen to what's going on and prepare the show. But yes, that hardware device can be the audio device for a studio system, for my output for my studio, or for that matter of fact, a larger count of audio output for a larger system on site, in a venue, on a design, on a show. So that is our single computer setup. Now, if we actually move to a dual computer setup, you could, and we'll talk about this, we'll wrap up at the end moving from a single to a dual machine. Well, basically, you know, what the difference is, is both application are running or their own, on their own um, computer. And we be, in this case, using the network with IP addresses, messages to SPAT. So in this case, no more local audio, IP address destination from QLab to our SPAT revolution for control, and then the audio over IP, or MADI, being our audio routing method. Now we're back to core audio in this particular case, core audio of the computer, the audio driver, you know, or the audio interface, and talking to a separate computer. And now that can obviously expand. We can have, you know, two playbacks, two SPAT revolution, main and backup, complete redundant system in a live production, theatrical production, where obviously, you know, no failure is an option. 
I did skip rapidly the, uh, the remote control option. I mean, didn't really skip it if I go back. In the case of a single machine, you can obviously be using QLab remote, very practical. I'll talk about this briefly, but other options exist to control SPAT for that matter of fact. Um, I was mentioning sound particles, space controller as an OSC, Lemur touch OSC, anything that speaks OSC can pretty much become a remote control of SPAT revolution as well. And from a creation perspective, obviously it becomes interesting. Same will apply when we go to two computer, then obviously the you know, iOS remote for QLab will be for QLab specific and we'll have these other iOS remote controller for SPAT revolution as you're building a system, okay? Good stuff. Okay, we're gonna dive in as well shortly. What time is it? Well, we're doing good. We've got you about for 45 minutes with Q&A here. Uh, let's just kind of briefly wrap up what are we gonna be able to achieve? Now that we understand the control of the audio, what are we gonna be able to achieve from a control perspective? Um, let me just put myself back here. Here we are. Here we are. So number one, I guess the most you know, basic one in, you know, in show control is being able to recall snapshots. Granted, you may want to be sending a specific control messages from QLab to move a specific source with a specific parameter. And that may be something that you're doing at a specific moment in the show. But chances are that you'll be using snapshot to recall the scene, right? The queue or the sub queues. And we can do this, you know, with that integration. And that would mean doing some go plus, go minus, as some people like to call it. We call it next and previous, right? Just firing next, 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 next. Now we support interpolation time, and that's important to understand that. You know, we can do this with an interpolation time, say next, but next in two seconds, you know? So a two second move, smooth movement from one to the other. So these are the recall with interpolation time. We can go next previous, we can go straight recall snapshot 28 as well. So that would be kind of a, the base. Um, because as you're programming, you may want to be using QLab like I'm more for management, like updating a snapshot. You've modified the scene, right? Maybe you have a remote control. You've positioned some servers around and you want to capture this. We still have the ability, which is not more of a show control, more of a show programming tool to actually do management, create snapshot, recall snapshots, uh, sorry, update snapshots, and so on and so forth. We have a few templates that I'm going to show later on that could do that. Now that's the snapshot control portion. Let's talk about source objects, obviously, because, you know, we can go beyond just, you know, a snapshot. And in this case, our key tool will be using a 2D map, okay, 2D map feature of QLab. You'll see that next X, Y, we can actually draw, you know, draw our path, draw our trajectory, for that matter of fact, with the exact time that we want. Okay, now we use both systems, Polar or Cartesian. Some people think X, Y, Z, have no idea what Polar is all about, but we use both. We come from this world, AED Polar, meaning azimuth, right, 360 degree azimuth. Elevation, if we are dealing with elevation, but the other one would be distance, distance of the source in actually... Um, in the SPAT environment. Good stuff. Well, and then all other source and room control messages. Mute the room, you know, bring down the level of what we call a room, a virtual space. Okay, moving on. Now I want a little beware here, <laughs> some support messages, you know, some support, you know, message come off in here. Interpolation time, quick note. Comma versus period. Yes, QLab uses the system, okay? The system uh, number separator, okay? So basically, in, you know, in, in your OS, you are, you know, you've got basically a, a configuration that says, hey, the comma or the, the actual uh, period is the separator for numbers. And that is important to you to understand uh, because we use this for interpolation time, okay? Um, I'm gonna be showing it to you. That's very important to understand. Make sure to use the proper number separator in your QLab file. Our templates actually have both. We have what we call the Euro version and a US version. They're basically one use the comma, the other one use the period. This way you don't have to change your system configuration, but ultimately that would be uh, the thing to do, okay? That was just a little beware. And then before we dive in, what's SPAT revolution? We may have people around here that are actually, uh, you know, new to SPAT revolution in some ways and coming from the QLab environment. So SPAT revolution in the base, it is an object-oriented spatial sound design tool, um, you know, to create, uh, to craft uh, basically some soundscapes. 
Um, and uh, we do this with a few interesting things. One of them is the reverberation engine. This room, this virtual space, gets a reverb engine. So we can start to build a sense of depth as we move an object, you know, walking away from the scene and use the reverb to build that that connection, that connection, you know, from an audience perspective. Very, very powerful, you know, when we bring reverberation into the equation. Um, what we will be able to do, because SPAT is and actually provides binaural audio, we will be able to virtualize our pre-production, our design over headphones. We may not, you know, be on the actual venue system yet. We'll actually look at this as well how we can prepare basically for a venue specific speaker arrangement using binaural audio. Two ways to do this for that matter of fact. And then, well, we obviously want to render. We want to deliver what we've done and they'll give us two options. The first one, we're going to be able to print audio. Maybe we're on headphones and we remain on headphones and we're actually going to decide to print for the specific speaker arrangement, right? Burning the, you know, the outputs of the 7, 8, 20 loudspeakers we have and then use this for an actual playback. Kind of a fixed show, right? We've designed, you burn it, and then it's just being play out. Something typical in Disney and in you know, a lot of productions where there's no live rendering per se. You know, it's, at this point, it becomes strictly a playback of the audio for each outputs premeditated in a lot of ways. But then last but not least will be to use SPAT in environment with main and backup machine if need be, and we'll deploy this to a reproduction in live. So, you know, we'll be, SPAT will be on standby for some movements. Maybe there's some live sources to the equation as well, or a mix of. Okay, a lot of information, Hugo. Are we gonna be okay? We're we gonna be good. Take a little sip here. Okay. Let's dive, because there's nothing like diving. And I'm going to be putting my headphones on because I want to be able, I want to be able to hear. Okay, where are we at? Here we go. So I've got my headphones on. We've got Spat Revolution um, that is open on this side. If I actually go to the home page, I see that the essential version is what is being used right now. And let's kind of stop start there and talk about the configuration aspect of SPAT Revolution. There won't be much today. I'm just going to hit the preference page to understand what we're going to be doing from an I.O. perspective, audio. And you see my input device is set to none, and the reason for this is simple. I have no hardware audio coming in. I'm going to be using software input, as I was explaining. On the output device, I'm going to black hole, 16 channel. Why is this? This is what I'm going to be piping back to you. You'll be able to listen in binaural. Hopefully, you have a pair of headphones kicking around. I'll be doing binaural audio, but you'll be able to listen as I'm moving. Set up there, quite simple. We'll come back on the OSC connections here a bit later. Uh, for now, let's actually hit the setup page and we'll briefly look at, you know, configuring. And in Essential, it's simplified to the point of a setup wizard that allows us to create the session that we need. And we're going to do this right now, you know, and ask us to configure a new room. I'm going to be choosing binaural audio. By default, there's a HRTF that's being picked up. I'm not going to talk about this now. And here is the ability, basically, to decide what that mixer is going to be or what those sources are going to be. I'm just going to go simple for now. I'm going to go for a mono and a stereo, okay? So creating a mono and a stereo spat source. You see some options there, okay, okay with hardware, okay with software. We'll be accepting this with software. And here we are. The configuration is ready from a spat perspective. Two sources, a room, two objects in the room, and we'll be dealing with, uh, you know, with those objects shortly. Now what's missing? Obviously an audio source, and what's missing on the output side? The actual output. Let me, uh, let me actually configure the output right away. That will be as simple as you know, adding an output block, and that would be me feeding. And by default, it's output one and two, and that's what I'm going to be sending you on your headphones, OK? So that was it for our friend Spat Revolution. Let's now move to QLab. We are on a blank, on a blank page of QLab. I'll be using some files that already exist, but let's talk about that configuration from an audio perspective. Um, when we are setting up QLab, we're talking about configuring what we call the workspace. Uh, settings, you know, the work basis, you know, and those settings are actually following your file. So if I actually open um, the, um, the QLab workspace setting, I'm going to be hitting the audio section. And you see all the audio patch possibilities. Now, I'm not going to deal with 
that too much right now. You can see I already have my E6 Avid S6L engine uh, straight there. And that would be me be ready to send audio cues up to 64 straight to that console. But what I'm going to have you appreciate here, if we go and edit the patch, we get this nice little window here, and that is our 64 Q outputs of uh, QLab. And thanks to the plugin support in QLab, we can add some sending elements, okay? Some audio sending element, our local audio path. Uh, you have the choice to configure in mono or stereo, as I was saying before. I'm going to go for a two-channel here on the first one, and that's it. We're going to be adding an effect. Well, it's not necessarily an effect. It's an audio pipe. Thanks to Flux uh, SE, uh, software engineering, local audio path technology, we'll take that SPAT Revolution Send, a plugin that we've been using for integration of Logic Pro Tools and Reaper and all the other DAWs on the planet. And I'm just going to stick one there, and here we are. Here's a little... SPAT Revolution plugin. We're not going to do much with that one. We're basically just going to engage local audio path, and that will be it, okay? Uh, let's go back to our SPAT quickly to see what happened. Oh, yeah, magic. By magic, that source is now there, okay? And uh, what I'm going to do uh, in the back that you don't see is I'm going to add another one. I'm going to add the mono one as well. SPAT Revolution send, and up, and you see it. Okay, as simple as this. My source are created. I'm ready to connect them and go with my live. So I can take that one, drag it there, drag this one, and here we are with a stereo input, a mono input as two objects. These are Q output one and two, Q output three of QLab, right? If we go back on QLab, right, Q output one and two that are being used here, and then Q, lab, Q output three for my mono object. That's it, as simple as this, okay? And then we'll be able to, um, then we'll be able to actually uh, get some audio going, and uh, we are ready, pretty much. I want to do a quick parenthesis as well on actual the name. You can in the plugin, and you can see right there, change the name. And if I call this Q uh, Output Three, okay, and we go back to Spat. And I'll show board screen later. You see that I actually renamed it. So you can from QLab maybe this uh, that this is a you know specific audio cue, a sound effects one, two, three, four, five, or whatever naming you know you would like to do. Um, that is being done on the QLab side, automatically renaming the source, you know, in SPAT, and you see when you know Q output three. Uh, see that name for that matter of fact. Okay. Excellent. What else do we have? So we have audio going in theory. I'll be firing a session in two seconds. Let's talk about the network configuration. Let's go back to QLab. We'll start with our QLab side. Up, let me both to close this. And we'll go on the networking uh, aspect of it. Okay, so on the networking aspect of it, you know, I'm just going to be naming this spat, and that is us deciding of a destination, okay, a destination. I've talked about local O's. This is what we're doing now, 0001. That is the way to, you know, configure that local destination, that the IP address could be a, re a remote computer, another one, and that would be uh, us later anyway, showing the two computer setup. Important will be the port number. That can be configured on both sides. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you put 8,000, you'll save yourself a lot of trouble. 8,000 is the default port and spat. And our templates are actually exactly this. And that's it. It's configured. That patch, that network patch is actually set. And we are done from that perspective, OK? Excellent. Excellent. Going back to SPAT, now that we have you know, network output on one side, we'll go back to our SPAT and we'll hit the preference page. I told you later that we would be going in the OSC connection. And I'm going to be simply using, there's no QLab preset. There's no need for a preset. So we basically are going to choose a, an input, which we call a custom. We choose where the network message is coming from. Again, local host, what we're doing. And the default port is 8000. There's nothing to reflect on. Et voilà. Et voilà. Um, as we start to talk about OSC and OSC messages, there's one concept that we need to understand is the concept of index, index numbers. And if you actually open a room, you see those numbers, right? Them one and two, okay? And that will be very important for us. If we actually go in QLab again, and we want to be doing, let's say we want to do a network queue um, for our object number one, and that would be index number one. I'm going to hit the 
Q network for the one that prefers shortcut it's Apple 8 and uh, that is not Apple 8 <laughs> uh, yeah it's Apple 8 thank you oh I've pressed the wrong one I'm not watching what I'm doing and we have we have a network queue now we're not going to start to build all messages one by one because we'll be here for all day I know these messages by art source slash one slash uh, let's just say azimuth at minus 90 degree okay and that would be our message uh, that we're preparing for a spat we're using one ear as um, we want to be moving the object number one and if i send that message and if i go back to qlab well we see minus 90 degree on that source okay so i've moved this well i'll be better to do qlab and spat like this voila let me just move it'll be easier It'll be easier for all of you. Et voila. Okay, so if I if I actually change this and put this back to zero and I go send that message, you saw the source get back on the center. Now we're moving on a stereo source. We're so we're moving the Barry center, the center of mass, the center of that stereo object. Okay. Uh, if we are on a mono source, if I actually go on source number two, right, and I, I say azimuth zero and I send, well. You're expecting that mono to go dead center. Now, he hasn't changed the distance of the object, just the source where it needs to be, okay? Easy like this. Let's just a quick parenthesis on index minus one. It is in our template, and it's an interesting one. It's the selected source. So if I actually go and spat, you see that I've got source number two selected. My message is going to be going to the selected source. So source number two, send, boom. And number two is that mono object, two minus nine degree. So you saw me just put minus one here. Kind of powerful. Okay, enough of the talking. Let's actually load a little session here. Let's load a little session. I'm going to load... Uh, let's load this one. So loading a session, bunch of stuff in it. Close that other one. Yeah. QLab is powerful. There's multiple workstations at the same time. Okay, here we are. What happened in SPAT? Let's look at this. I'm going to be closing that session, for that matter of fact. Ah, you see, all the sources appear, and those sources are gone from the session. I actually disconnected. I'm going to go close, close this environment. And there we are, um, back in an empty space. Now, we could configure this thanks to the get, send, return button. Up there, I can actually discover all these uh, sources. This is a 16 stereo QLAM template. Could be one of my template. Um, there's multiple one possible. But we're going to go simpler. I'm just going to open uh, an actual session. Let me just mute the audio to be careful with your little ears, just in case. And I'm going to load the 16 stereo Q here. And here we are. Here we are in an environment. And we have uh, these Q outputs that are connected to 16 stereo um, sources, feeding a binaural room. We're using binaural, going output one and two right there. And that would be what you hear. And here we are. If I actually go in QLab and I go ask and mute source number one, number two, number three, number four, they actually disappear for us as well. Right? And if I fire source number one, you should be seeing some audio, and I'm seeing it, most probably not hearing it. And you will be if I unmute source. Let's try that. Yeah, you're hearing this to your left, most probably. Okay, well, he's stacking some sound. I'll fire all these sounds for that matter of fact. Mute number one, let's unmute source number two. Right. And there we are starting to build a soundscape um, in Spot Revolution. Right, mute those sources, be soloing a particular source. Just hearing this in the back. Voila. Now, thanks to our reverb engine, it would be quite interesting. And right now we have reverb. Some volume a bit. Okay, so that is us basically playing with the perceptual factors. I'm going to do this in my other session.
I guess you're getting this. This is it. We are ready to go. We are ready to send messages. In QLab, in that file, I've got some mute rooms and unmute rooms. <laughs> Let's say we want to drop the gain on source number two for minus five. So I could just, you know, fire this up. Let's see what it's doing. Yes, it's sending source number two, gain minus five. And I could do this with the ramp, for that matter of fact. Back to our comma or period. We're going to be using period. I've got a a system of using the period. And that will be us. And if you watch uh, source number two and go. Um, you see number two, it's fading, minus three, minus five. So the two second ramp on that specific source right there. Okay. Excellent. Let's get back to a smaller session and kind of deal with uh, a bit of the perceptual factors. Uh, the perceptual factors in SPAT. I'm going to be closing the SPAT session up and I'm going to be opening. Let's just go simple, simple, simple. There you are. Let's try that one. Okay, one mono source, one stereo source. I just opened the session in SPAT. You see it, the two sources appear. I'm going to save you the configuration you saw me drag before. Just going to open the session. will get us going. Just simple two sources. Here we are. So here we are in a uh, session. Stereo mono feeding two sources. Again, a room in binaural. We'll look at channel-based system, for that matter of fact, um, and outputting to maybe an Atmos system or a studio system or any speaker arrangement, for that matter of fact. Um, and here we are. So. Let me maybe fire a sound. Do we have music? <whistles> and we do. And we do. <whistles> that is our stereo object. <whistles> right? Now we can move in space. I don't have reverb on it. I could. <whistles> reverb off. Kind of gets us to talk about the perceptual factors a bit. You know, do you see uh, the panel when I click on the source here? I see all the properties, and I'm not going to go through all of them today. But I want you to appreciate uh, perceptual factors, and this is our direct sound presence. Our room presence, which we don't have a reverb now, but if we activate the verb, right? This is all controllable with OSC per object and the perceptual factor the interesting thing is that we can actually enable the reverb engine but we can do it in generating early reflections that are localized with the source and that's critical to what we're doing in spat revolution um, we can generate clusters so late reflections that are by default diffused but can be relocalized and last but not least a tail that's completely diffused okay so that is us again well, you can hear it the tail's dead but you can we have built everlasting. I can't believe what God's done through us. He's given life. Now I just close those reflections. Subtle reflections. Okay. Now, do we have something else? Yeah, we probably have something else. Or is Patrick? Spring. There you are, Patrick. Spring has come, and joyfully the birds welcome it with cheerful song, and the streams caressed by the breath. You can probably feel, you know, the sense of realism that you can start to build as you have a reverb engine, your object is moving. And that is important to understand in Spout Revolution, is we have beyond, you know, panning, if you want, and sending an audio signal to a binaural output to a loudspeaker arrangement is actually this attenuation model. As the source goes away, there's an attenuation of the level, which obviously drives more reverb engine. You hear more of the ambiance per se, the room. And beyond that is uh, air absorption simulation. So a little filtering in the high frequency becomes very, very natural. Now, you need not generate reverb engine all the time, but when you want, when you do, uh, it becomes really, really powerful. The fair spring sky in all its glory. Okay, Patrick is dead. For now, anyway. Um, we will maybe explore one thing here is actually if we wanted to talk about the speaker arrangement. We've been in binaural, but maybe someone is actually wanting to 
you know, work on a specific arrangement. And we can do this by changing that configuration. I've muted for one second. I'm actually going to change back to our setup wizard. I'm not going to change my object configuration, but I'm going to change to a channel-based system. What channel-based is? Speaker arrangements. Custom arrangements, you know, uh, that we could do. Uh, I'll load one uh, later on. Um, actually, do I have one maybe just ready here? Do I have that ready? Yeah, we'll do it later. Uh, we'll do that part later. But um, yeah, we could do it on this one just by firing the setup wizard. I can change the channel base arrangement. Let me choose an Atmos setup that I have here. Could be whatever speaker arrangement. What I want you to understand is obviously that uh, you know we can change the configuration to an actual speaker arrangement, and we're still going to use binaural, but this time we'll use it for binaural monitor. We'll virtualize the speaker arrangement, no longer the sources, and that's interesting because we can actually virtualize our speaker arrangement and the disadvantage of a speaker arrangement. If it's a stereo system, you know, well. You know, we won't be able to localize in the back as much. Signals will stay in the front. So what, that's what binaural monitor virtualizing will help us to do. Okay. Let me just uh, remove that block quickly. Right, so the configuration, nothing has changed. The input, everything is done, but we have now a actual, and you could see it, a Dolby Atmos setup. Could be whatever arrangement. Could be obviously a live venue, a frontal systems. We're not going to talk about speaker configuration today. But what we are feeding here is a master for all your outputs, and we're feeding as well a binaural master that will feed a binaural monitor. And if I connect this, and I should be able to unmute this. Ori. Yes. Voila. Now this time, contrary to our setup earlier, which was purely binaural. Spring. Spring has come and joined it with cheerful song, and the streams, caressed by the breath of zephyrs, okay. flow swiftly. This is us virtualizing that scene in binaural audio over headphones. Okay. So we'll be very practical, you know, that could be a speaker. You'll see me load a speaker arrangement typical from a show shortly. Okay, good for that. Well, let's move this a step. Let's move this a step. We'll stop that session for a second, and I'm going to load a little. Oop. Again, open the session, boom, spat, discover everything for us. See it clearly. And close that session. I'm going to open a session that's already done. City. Voila. Okay. Here we are again. We've got some stereo elements, some mono elements of a little a little soundscape design. Uh, this actually had a 7.1 source, and that the example I was saying, you know, limitation mono stereo. I'm feeding the stereo left, right, the center, the ambiance, uh, well, not the ambiance, the surround left, right, um, you know, all as separate elements into SPAT. Um, then I've got other elements, a little kid, you know, ambiance, you know, playing playground sound, and then other elements, mono, stereo, and they're feeding a binaural room back to an output ear, and go. And go. Voila. You'll see a little animation going shortly. Oh, here you are. bicycle moving towards the right no the left <laughs> yeah my headphones on the right side so a little bicycle and now you know wondering uh, how that was done well let's actually have a look at the q lab now All right so we've got this uh this basically group uh, you know that's firing a bunch of sounds but in the case of the bicycle i have an actual move specific to this one so let's look at this move we'll hit the setting page and this is it this is us speaking to source number seven um, on the xy using the 2d map and if you watch Pat on uh, you know on the right side here, you can see as I'm drawing, and that becomes very interesting if you want to be drafting a specific, you know, a specific. Sorry for that, 
a specific movement. Play that movement. Oh, it's too long. 20 seconds. Let's go for 10 seconds. Uh, two seconds for that matter of fact. Let's do that. Boom. Uh, yeah, anyway, what I wanted you to uh, to understand here is that obviously we can control the duration of that total trajectory move, but beyond that is us defining the scale. Now we are on two and two. Uh, SPAT uses um, absolute value. We have a basically a canvas of 100 meter by 100 meter. This is the max distance if you want the max X, Y, Z. And uh, so in this case, if I add uh, a map of 100, well, you would see us... Uh, a source actually <laughs> going outside, and that is me choosing where I'm actually, uh, you know, uh, working. If I reduce this to two as well, now, you know, I'm going to be maximum two meter. My corner here is at two meter. From the listener perspective, we're always working from that reference, okay? Making sense? Excellent. And if we actually look at the destination of those network messages, this is actually going currently on SPAT local. And SPAT local is my 12700 local host. I could be sending this to the SPAT network. And I'll show you this as we're going to be looking at how do we move from a single computer to two computers. Okay. Okay. And we have other little sounds here and there. Oh, probably just muted. Yeah. Oh, so. My little cat, my little cat sometime. Oh, am I muted? I am. Oh, there you are, little cat. I'm right, just firing a bunch of sounds around. Um, we we'll even have that little siren moving around. Again, we're using a 2D, uh, a 2D uh, movement, with that little object moving around. So you're getting the concepts here? Let's briefly talk about a recall, you know, actually recalling some snapshots. We've got this a perfect example of a snapshot recall message, snap slash recall. We're going to be loading the, uh, the template that we provide, so you'll see all the possibilities. Um, and uh, snapshot recall number one, if I fire this, this is a two-second move of an actual scene. Same thing if I recall this one, right? So that's us sending a message with interpolation time, and SPAT's receiving the message, and we'll be doing that change in two seconds. Okay? Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, maybe we actually uh, talk about the dual computer setup a bit. You know, so now... You know, I, w what I've come been showing you is me working on a single machine, you know, QLab and SPAT, firing with the local audio pad feature. But interestingly enough, those audios are actually going as well on my AVB audio output. If I look at the workspace, the workspace setting, right, it's still going out there. What that means is that the fact that we put a plug-in doesn't stop the signal. We're grabbing the signal, bringing it local. But my configuration to be moving to a dual computer system is ready to go. And we'll be uh, looking at this briefly here. So yes, my audio is already patched. My Q output, nothing is changing. I don't need to repatch anything. Obviously, I can be choosing which audio device, you know, I want to be descending to, being a Dante, a DVS, being an AES 67. That patch will remain as well. You're just changing the actual audio output, you know, device per se. Uh, then moving to a dual computer setup, well, you're already kind of ready from an audio perspective. There's nothing to change but to choose the proper audio device. Um, and then will be the networking aspect. And as I was explaining you or just showing you briefly, if I go in the network, I already have configured those, you know, those actual two destinations. So moving from a single machine to a dual machine would be as simply to say, hey, your Q ear siren move, you're no longer going local, you're going on network. And that's it. You basically change the destination, and that's it, that's all. Okay, change the destination of a message. Now, if I fire this, you won't see it going in SPAT anymore locally, but you will be seeing it on my second computer as I fire this. So, step number one from moving from one computer to two computer. Let me look at our remote computer here. I've just loaded a, um, actually 
looking at this computer right behind me. This is using uh, the ultimate version of SPAT Revolution, which gives us the ability of doing multiple rooms. We'll talk about the, the, the differences in the version. But now we all have that dual computer setup. We just simply need to, and let me uh, get uh, control on that machine. I can simply load that session, the same session I've loaded on my single machine. I can load it now, and here we are. And we look at the setup and we see all these red, this, you know, the sends, the audio sends are no longer there, right? There's no local source anymore. We're going to be moving to an hardware setup. And thanks here to the little button uh, called convert to hardware, I convert everything to hardware in a matter of a click. Go to the input matrix. Let's call it a one-to-one -one matrix, if I can remember my shortcuts. <laughs> Thank you. One to one matrix, and here we are. Now there's no sound, and uh, because I don't have anything going. Well, it's supposed to be sound anyway. <laughs> oh, I've closed in the back here. But anyway, don't need to say it to be sound. You got to trust me on that one. But that is simple as this, right? So. Uh, you know, we're receiving our audio from an AVB network on that particular case. I've got the console in the equation. That's what is closed right now. So my audio from QLab are going on the console in this case, console going to the SPAT. But that was me, you know, modifying the session to be a hardware input session. Patch is all done. Channel 16 here, you see, so the one-to-one -one patch. And if I want to be to see the sending a network message, I'm going to go back in my QLab here. I had modify, was it the move on the siren? Yes, going to the SPAT network. And you see the movement, right? So I'm firing the movement. Now it's no longer local. It's that remote computer. So the move from one machine to two machine is very practical. And I can go back on one machine. I haven't broken anything really on my single machine setup as long as I send a destination at the right place, OK? Good. Yeah. Well, if there's any question, we'll be taking some, uh, you know, as we are slowly wrapping up this session. A lot of things could be talked about. It's not obviously, you know, the goal today to explore all QLab possibilities and all SPAT possibilities. We would be there for days. But one thing that I can definitely do here is just to, before we move back, um, let me just open uh, this little uh, session here. Here we are. I'm going to close this one. Let's go back to QLab. Up, up. Up uh, and QLab go. Okay, um, this is what our actual template a bit looks uh, like. Um, many things that you know we're basically doing here is that we've we're providing examples of a bunch of you know parameters. So um, it's not the exact file. Uh, I'll explain you the different files that we have available. But in all our file or in our example files anyway, we show example of you know having a position preset, you know, at 4 meter x, 4 meter y on source number one, and so on and so forth. Azimuth at minus 90 degree, you know, elevation at zero, distance at two, with an AED message. And there's complete details on everything. And these are position change and other uh, source, uh, um, source uh, uh, parameters that can be changed. In the movement, same thing here. We have, like, examples of, you know, just a, a movement on a 2D you know, two by two meter square. Um, you know, we could change obviously again the max x and y if we wanted to deal with that. The ping pong effect that we could fire. Just kind of examples. You know, uh, that can be the processing change as well, primarily for the reverb engines, so changing the presence, the warmth, the brilliance, the reverb. So all these are available in our examples, uh, kind of pre-created. They're all on source number one, but I can obviously copy paste. Say that's for source number twelve or minus one if I wanted to be talking to the selected source. Uh, other examples that we have in our file is, you know, muting a source, unmuting a source, setting a gain, you know, to minus 10, resetting the gain, well, or setting a gain with, you know, 2.0 in, oops, not that, but 2.0 in two seconds. Again, interpolation time that are working. Uh, we have in the same manner uh, example for snapshots. If I actually look at briefly at snapshots here. Uh, Spat snapshots, here we are. Okay, so yes, same thing in our example files, the ability to create snapshots, the ability to remove snapshots. So that's more for management, not for show control, but kind of practical. If you have your QLab, you have your little templates with create, recall, and manage, and update. 
Uh, you know, makes it easy. Snapshot current update is a quite practical one. You know, you're on current snapshot, you're modifying from a show controller, you're building a scene, update the current, and then you can fire a next and previous. Modify the scene, update current again, so you can play with those two. Um, not sure, do I have them in the workspace cart? Maybe I have it uh, not in this one, yeah. Um, yeah, not in this one. But uh, yeah, you could build yourself a cart as well. And that would be you know, the ideal scenario, like kind of your programming cart for people that are not familiar with carts. Um, carts is the ability with the iOS remote, you know, to have some buttons, simple buttons to recall something. So you could build yourself a creation, you know, <laughs> a creation environment. Well, oh, there it is right there, I think. Well, this is one example, you know, little cart that would have allowed me to create some snapshots, update some snapshot, recall some snapshot, um, and so on and so forth. I would most probably want to put the next and previous. Actually, in our template, we have some carts with the next and previous and snapshot current update, current snapshot update in it. Again, just many tools to actually create an environment for creation, um, remaining in QLab as much as possible, not having to fire uh, you know, SPAT and QLab all the time. Voila. Voila, voila, voila. Here we are. So let me switch back right here. What do we've got? Um, yeah, let's talk about those templates. I can uh, load one, uh, one up if I want to, uh, to show to you, for that matter of fact. But I was explaining you exactly what they are. It's the exact same thing to what I was explaining. But we have uh, various templates possible. Number one, we have one, a new one that should be online shortly, which is 16 mono, 8 stereo. Uh, objects, very simple to start. You can obviously modify it, but that gets you going right away. We have one specific to the cues. So I was showing you, right, recalling a uh, presence, recalling a mute, recalling this. So this is an example file just for that. And we have a third one that's available for a snapshot cart example. So the, you know, update current and next and previous. So three templates are available. We make them available as Euro <laughs> and US. We've been calling these different versions Euro and US, but that really is one using comma and one using period for the interpolation time. So we save you from having to modify and remember, we now have uh, a start file to get you going right away, okay? Excellent. Okay, now the versions, just briefly, SPAT Revolution, you know, understanding the differences. Now the essential gets you going for many things, you know, 32 audio objects is quite a bit, you know, for sound effect, you know, could be more, obviously you may want more and ultimate would be there for you. But just to understand the essential gets you going right away, we can do a single room setup in binaural audio or actually change that binaural setup like you saw me do and do an up to 16 speaker channel uh, setup, okay? Um, let me actually just uh, load an example of something that would be interesting. Uh, let me just uh, get back to the remote uh, setup here. So right, we're back on that remote computer. What I want you to um, to appreciate this time, I'm not gonna save this session. Uh, well, it's not on the remote. I'm gonna switch computers, sorry for that. Let's get back to that one, that local machine. Too many spats all over the place. Okay. Not saving that session. Uh, and I've got a specific file with the venue set up. And to me, that is a critical one. Oh, what's going, Hugo? Well, this is it. This is getting real, right? We've got sources. My session's not open, so they're not seeing right now. I've got the sources. Same that you saw before with my um, little city soundscape thing. Uh, but it's going to an actual room. It's called bin. It could be all venue. Uh, with a nine array, nine line array system, frontal system. Let's say we were building something for a specific venue. So what we have the ability to do is, you know, load that speaker arrangement, and we have custom arrangements, predefined arrangements. That's not the subject of the day. And beyond that is the ability in the room to load what we call an overlay. Okay. So you see the nine line arrays frontal system. I put that overlay. Why is this interesting? Well, back to crafting something, right? You know, you saw me do the 2D map, uh, the 2D map earlier. If I actually uh, you know, let's just see here, movements 
on a selected source. Okay, let's try that. Let's try that. Source minus one. You see? So that's obviously me here sending some messages. Let's go to a bigger map. Right, so what I can do now is, thanks to this overlay and the 2D map, if I actually fire a QLab at the same time, you know, be better for you to understand. So what I can do with this is actually draft the trajectory based on the speaker arrangement, based in the overlay of a venue. And while listening to it in binaural audio, that's kind of important to understand in the equation, right, that that session, that audio output, which by the way, I could be outputting to the speaker setup. It's not only binaural, I could I'll go all the way to 16 outputs with essential and up to 6428 with ultimate. But I could actually take that output print it if I'm ready to actually go for playback or live do it. Now, in the case of this session here, I'm using binaural loops. I can virtualize the particular setup, okay? Important to understand here, this overlay and the speaker arrangement becomes uh, quite handy. Okay, so what can we do? Yeah, so essential single room in binaural or up to 16 speaker or ambisonic third order for the people that uh, care about the conversation of ambisonic, which is, you know, interesting. We can do uh, ambisonic synthesis in SPAT. And then we've got the ultimate version, which is ultimately unlimited, uh, you know, audio channels, but limited by hardware, the audio interface and the computer and the computer capacity. And what we bring in, uh, in the ultimate uh, version is the multi-room environment. If I go on my remote computer, which add that particular, um, that particular um, um, ulti ultimate setup here, we had an ultimate version on that computer. I can in my setup actually add a room and bring all these sources. So here what we could do is we can do in parallel a binaural output and an output to a speaker arrangement. And you can start to think beyond that, that some objects, you know, might be uh, not connected to all the rooms. Why would that be? Well, that could be two reverb engines, for example. Now, uh, you know, I'm using binaural in another room here, but you could see that these objects could be in that environment with one reverb engine, these other ones in another room with another reverb engine. So really with the, um, the ultimate version, we can think about layering rooms, layering reverb engine, layering panning techniques, and we just go nuts after that as far as possibilities. So up in modular uh, configuration. Now the sessions are always compatible. When you're loading an essential back to an ultimate, you could do it no problem. That's no problem. When you go back or go from the big one, the ultimate, down to essential, you will need to make a decision. You can only choose one room. The other rooms will go away. So these are the core differences, but from a creation perspective, 16 output is a lot of output. Binaural audio for, for you know, for, for being able to virtualize that soundscape over headphone becomes, uh, you know, um, quite practical with the essential version. Um, voila. Um, now, these uh, products, the SPAT Revolution license, is available as a I'm gonna say it, perceptual license with one year support and upgrade. Um, that is one option, but we have the subscription model as well. So you're working on a production for one month, you can go on monthly, no engagement. You're, you know, you want to kind of budget a yearly um, a budget for SPAT Revolution, you can go monthly engage, uh, you know, with monthly payment with an annual engagement, or literally uh, yearly as well is possible. Various options in the case of, uh, and again, it's possible for both, uh, for ultimate or for essential. Now, essential is yearly only, but uh, still the model of subscription is available as well. Now, Thanks to uh, a special uh, for, <laughs> you know, just for this, uh, this webinar, we have a special offer. Anyone that would like to jump in on the SPAT Revolution Essential, for example, or the Ultimate, for the next 72 hours, we have a, Q, a little coupon code, flux-qlab-web-22. So for the next 72 hours, you get $100 straight off. That's like 25% off on an Essential license or 90 euro equivalent in euro. So um, special offer for you guys for being on our web webinar today for the next 72 hour and here we go with Q&A. Um, now I don't see my friend. Uh, uh, okay, well, let me uh, get to see my friend. Sylvain Lambeau, a way to loop an OSC message in QLab. And uh, what do we've got? Wenzel, can I see? Um, uh, Arsène, yeah, okay. 
Can I see the position parameter change in a digital console external control when I send a tragic to you from QLab? Um, just kind of bidirectional connection. I'm not sure. Can I see the position parameter change in a digital console external control when I send a trajectory queue from QLab? Yes, totally. Um, what our friend is referring to here, if I go in our and uh, remote, is the fact that, and you see it here, actually I've got a bunch of ins and outs on that particular uh, remote machine. I'm getting input from an output from a console, but you see those messages that I was receiving from QLab on that port 8000 are going out to the console, for that matter of fact, and they're actually going out to other destination. That could be me outputting to a digital console, for example, um, you know, changing those parameters. Now, understanding the digital console has a limitation of eight OSC generic faders and eight OSC buttons, but you could, um, you know, capture. Now, you're not going to capture the trajectory, but you can recall the scene and then those parameters will be updated on the digital um, on the digital uh, OSC uh, uh, the OSC integration of the digital console yes I'm not sure if that's the question exactly but uh, you can definitely do this um, just kind of bi-directional communication yeah well so yeah when so the the conversation I mean QLab is one way I mean you're sending from QLang to SPAT that's what it is now what you do from SPAT and thanks to these OSC connection you can be outputting yes to digital you could have a bi-directional digital configuration here um, no problem now, I'm not sure why you would want to do this or what's the use case, but that's possible. Uh, Sylvain, what happens if we create both a show on QLab and SPAT and use a different speaker arrangement, larger, for example, for the show? OSC machine QLab moves some... Pro ah, yeah, I haven't done this. You see, Sylvain, you there. he's there to bring me back in line. He's there to bring me back in line. Let me uh, show you guys this. Okay, loading that session. I'm adding a speaker arrangement here, okay? I'm gonna connect all those sources. What's going to happen is if you modify this, let's say to the nine array setup, so I'm changing the speaker arrangement. SPAT is actually intelligent enough to tell you, hey, my friend, you are now scaling that scene. So whatever you've been doing, and in the case here, we're changing a room that was normalized two meter, two meter. And for the one that cares to know, this is our normalized value for speaker arrangement. So it's basically looking at that new arrangement and it's proposing to scale everything at uh, 11.15. And it will scale everything to respect your creation. It will scale the... Um, well, first of all, there's something that we call the protection zone, which drives the attenuation model. That would get scale. And it will even scale the automation. So if I actually, you see that soundscape here? Uh, you don't see much. Yeah, because I scale so much, I need to scale the sources as well. <laughs> Voila. Okay. So it scaled everything to that larger size, number one. And... If I look on the output side, we have a scaling section. It applies the scaling. So every piece of automation that you would have done on a normalized system, binaural, if you want, but mean you know, on a speaker arrangement, a standard speaker arrangement in SPAT that are all normalized at two meters, it would scale it and every piece of automation coming in are being scaled right now. So it's all taking care of you, okay? You can change that scaling, you can put it back to zero if you don't want to scale, but if your show was created. So if I move again to another venue, right, I go back to my setup, and I move back to another thank you. And I say, well, no, today is actually we're going to that uh, AES demo that I've done. Again, it's going to change it now. Not much, interestingly enough, but it has scaled everything, okay? Um, it has scaled back to everything, scaled down. So we're now on a 3.250 sc uh, scaling. So we're respecting as we're moving. So if you add automation done, now you're not obliged to apply this, you can, you know, to apply the actual scaling, you know, there's an option, okay and cancel, but it is proposed by default to simplify. So I'm assuming that's the question, Sylvain, that was a long answer, there's no quick one. Uh, different speaker arrangement, larger, for example, uh, distance specifically. Yeah, that's the distance scaling, you see it, yeah, right there. Um, a way to loop an OSC message in QLab. Uh, no. You know, I'm not a QLab designer, sound designer, so uh, no. I mean, looping what? Um, 
you know, I mean, typically, you know, if you've got a single message, right, if we look at single messages, right, that no fade mean there's it's just one message, one message being sent. Um, and there's no way to, you know, to actual uh, do an infinite loop on it. There's maybe some tricks. There's most probably, you know, a way to say at the end recall this one and create some loops. There are ways, um, but I don't have anything set up for that. Um, voila. That's it for questions. Is the crowd being that good? Or answers are all being given in the live? My friend Arsène uh, is going to tell me if we have more. Otherwise, well, as maybe some last questions come up, I can talk about a few things. Um, you know, feel free to obviously you know use our Facebook user group, by the way, for more questions as we keep on. We've got more of those webinars coming in three weeks from now. We're skipping. We've got a trade show going on in two weeks. Um, but in three weeks, April 20th, integration of SPAT Revolution Essential with Logic Pro. That would be uh, our subject for that one. Another one that I'm looking forward on the 27th, Meyer Space Map Go, you know, used with SPAT Revolution. So using the Meyer Space Map as a trajectory for elements, virtualizing your Meyer Space Map show with SPAT Revolution in binaural as a tool for creation, which does not exist in the, in the Space Map solution. So you could use the Space Map all, uh, controller, you could use uh, all the tools, the QLab Space Map templates as well, uh, but use SPAT as a binaural audio virtualization, uh, very interesting session. And we'll be moving, talking about moving from single to distributed hardware setup, going on with the Nundo session as well, with the integration of ADM OSC, well, I say Nundo 11, Nundo 12 will most probably be out by then. And last but not least, we'll be on June 1st, talking about Dolby Atmos and some content, creating some 7.1.2 beds in SPAT with reverb engine, with the perceptual factors. Um, and as we uh, you know, get closer to the end, let me just check if we've got more questions. Uh, what does my friend say? All good, it looks like. Excellent. Just to wrap up, you're interested to try the software, maybe before to uh, jump and take our special offer, you can hit spatrevolution.com, demo trials right there. You can try Essential, try Ultimate, even Test Driver WFS, which is something we've released uh, rapidly. If for the one that knows about the subject, there's a quit guide, online user guide, bunch of resources. Templates for QLabs are online right now. These six templates, well, three Euro, three uh, US version are online. We've got the Reevolution tools as well, um, which are part of uh, some creation tools for people that are working with Reaper. And again, special offer for the next 72 hours with the code flux-qlab-web-22. You can get $100 coupon voucher towards the purchase of a perpetual license of SPAT or the essential version. And as I said, and we'll be wrapping this up. Yeah, it's a bit longer than was expected. A lot of things to talk about. But feel free to join us on the Flux Immersive user group on Facebook. We actually have moderators online. People, uh, the community is, you know, sharing some uh, interesting information and asking, obviously, at the same time, information. So, voila. That's it for me today. I think we are done. Thanks for everyone for watching, being uh, so patient for just over an hour here uh, instead of our 45-minute target. But, uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the session. After have a great day and talk to you another time. Well, see you in a few weeks for another webinar. Cheers. Bye-bye.